are looking at the regulating the economy, uh, weighing the impact of forex injection. Um, yesterday, you would recall that um, there was a trendy news, uh, particularly from the uh, announcement, or so to say, uh, from the, C the acting, gov acting governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And that has raised a lot of uh, questions and conversations. I recall that yesterday I was on the, t on the, on the platform X, or what you formerly knew as Twitter, and there were a lot of, uh, you know, chat rooms there where people were talking about this and making anticipations or speculations, as the case may be. And our guest this morning is not the person, but Professor Owalike, uh, Professor Uche Owalike, I beg your pardon. He is a capital market expert and will be doing justice to this in a short while. But before then, let's listen to what the CBN governor said and we'll be back to, you know, start up the conversation. Stay with us. I shared with him what we're doing to improve supply. If you look at the official market, you find that that market has been fairly stable and the spreads or the difference have not fluctuated as much. We do not believe that the changes going on in the parallel market are driven by pure economic demand and supply but are topped by speculative demand from people. Uh, some of the plans and strategies which I'm not at liberty to share with you mean sooner rather than later the speculators should be careful because we believe the things we're doing when they come to fruition may result in significant losses to them. But my presence here is more about the concerns the president has and his need to know that we are doing something about it, assurances of which I have given him totally. So I hope this helps. We are looking at it and we're doing things which will significantly impact the market in a few days time and we will all see it. The intention is to ensure the environment operates at a level that's more efficient, but also that is also very reasonable and does not have a negative impact to the best that we can on the lives of the average person. All right, thank you so much. And there you heard it. And uh, like I said earlier on, we have Professor Uche Nwalike here in the studio with us, a capital market expert. And he is the Director, Institute of Capital Market Studies, uh, Nassau State uh, University. All right, Les, uh, you're welcome to the program, sir, this morning. Thanks so much. You know, the moment we heard, um, we heard news that uh, this sort of information was going to be put out, I had to reach out to my colleague and say, look, quickly, we need to talk about this today. Um, we, we, we have seen the dollar, I mean, on a steady increase, you know, and then yes. we have the Naira decline. on a steady decline yes. and all of that. Yes. And it almost seemed as though there's no control, there's no control of any sort about yes. this. Now, to a layman, we, we don't really understand what is going on. Can you break down to us in the simplest terms what exactly the problem is? Uh, thank you so much. I like the way you put it. Because if you don't understand what the problem is, it will be difficult for you to begin to say you want to address, you know, the, you know, the, the issue. Uh, because, you know, as, as they say, a problem um, half identified is half solved. Mm. And what is that problem? First, the first question to ask is what is, what is even the exchange rate? If we say exchange rate is rising, what is it? Exchange rate is nothing but the price of your currency hmm. in relation to, you know, another currency. That is exchange rate. Now, the other question is, what determines exchange rate? What factors influence exchange rate? Okay, basically two things. It is the demand, just like exchange rate, by the way, is a price, hmm. all right? So just like any other price, it is the demand and supply that would eventually determine what that price should be know what the exchange rate should be okay so when you have more demand for the foreign currency that is the dollar in this case mm. okay outstripping the supply you should expect that the price will rise the exchange rate will go up and if you have the reverse okay you have a situation situations in which you know the exchange rate can you know uh, come down when the exchange rate is going up you say the naira is depreciating okay 
and when it is um, coming down, you say it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a appreciated. Yeah. Okay. So it's important we understand that. Um, I'm sure you, you 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 know you must have read, even if you were not around at the time, that in the 80s, okay, the exchange rate was more or less like one naira to one dollar. Two dollar. Yes. In true. fact, before the 19 before the 80s, okay, the in terms of exchange rate, the naira was even stronger, you know, than the dollar. Mm. So at some point it, they were at, at you know at, at par. par, okay. Now of course with time, you know things began to change, and um, what were these factors that um, you know were responsible? In the eighties, you know I talked about demand. Let me even start from the demand side. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In the eighties, you, you could count the number of Nigerians who were studying abroad, okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, according to the United Nations Institute of Statistics, it says that. As of even as of 1998, just about 15,000 Nigerians were studying um, abroad. Hmm. But by 2018, what has happened? The number has ballooned to uh, as much as 100, um, you know, a thousand. So of course, you know, these people will pay their fees in dollars. True. So they will demand dollars. Hmm. Okay. So between 2010, according to CBN data, between 2010 and 2020, Nigeria spent close to 30 billion dollars hmm. on foreign education alone wow. okay. now you come to health it is the same story okay there was a time too that you know uh, we didn't have this um, uh, issue of uh, medical tourism it wasn't a problem mm. okay today people go abroad to treat headache yeah okay so we again according to that data from the central central bank over the same period about 10 billion dollars was spent so you now find that with respect to education and um, 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 medical and, uh, tourism, health. yeah. Okay, medical tourism. Nigeria had spent within a ten-year period about forty billion dollars hmm. on those two alone, and these are what we, what they call it, you know, um, invisibles. Hmm. Now, uh, come to think of it, what is the our external reserves today? Hmm. When we say external reserves, is simply the stock of our foreign currency, yeah. which of course is mainly held in dollars. Hmm. Okay, our external reserves today. Okay, I was still going to the issue of um, what has happened to it. At least what is reported is $33 billion. So what we spent on these invisibles, okay, you know, um, even more than the external reserves. Hmm. So you also come to imports. Yeah. There was a time we were also importing. Um, the the v imports into this country was just about $15. I think about um, 20 um, in the 90s, again, 15,000, uh, uh, you know, billion dollars. Okay. Today is um, again according to CBN data as of 2021, hmm. it had gone up to um, you know close to 60 billion dollars. Okay. All right. Now, if you take uh, take the supply side, okay, it's the same story. In, in terms of you know we are not having as we used to have enough dollars, and how do you have dollars? It's only when you have something to exchange, mm -hmm. you know, that other countries need that you can say you have um, uh, dollars. If you have nothing to exchange, all right, you won't have dollars. Unfortunately for us, what is it that we give to the world today? It is, it is uh, basically oil. So crude oil is accounting for over 90% of the our foreign exchange. Of our foreign exchange. Yeah. Yes, so you understand that. Yeah. So that tells you that this economy uh, is highly vulnerable. If anything happens to crude oil price, then that foreign exchange won't be there. Hmm. The point I'm making is this. The demand side is high. The pressure is still there. Okay. On, on the supply side. Okay. Again, let me even finish with the demand. Uh, on, the look, on the look at what you're wearing, talking. This is talking made, uh, I'm sure. Made, made uh, a <laughs> suit. All right. In those days, in the 80s and 90s, the bulk of what we wore were from textile mills in Asaba, in Kano, in um, uh, Fontua, hmm. in Aba. And Kaduna, please. And Kaduna. Don't forget Kaduna. And Kaduna. Today, <laughs> much of it is imported. In All right, those days again, yeah. let me finish this. The cars that we are driven here, we are either assembled in Lagos, Volkswagen, or Kaduna. Uh, you know, Pujo. Pujo. Today, we are important. So tell me, how can we get out of this problem? So the central bank does not print dollars. We should understand that. Yeah. Maybe I will leave it at, at this on, until you uh, okay. ask me the next a, a good way to start, but then yeah. I'll just cross over to uh, my colleague in Lagos, uh, Xion. Uh, Xion, over to you, please. 
Uh, the acting CBN governor on Monday was very emphatic of the fact that he, 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 he feels strongly that the issue with Naira really going down at this point in time is due to the activities of speculators. Uh, are you of the opinion too? Hmm. Are you of that opinion as well? Yes, of course. Oh, oh, oh yes. Um, that's part of it. Um, that's part of it. What, what, he, what he was actually saying, or uh, my understanding of what he meant, um, is that um, um, there is also an aspect of this demand that is artificial, that is uh, that has no economic basis, which is what, what which is the speculative, uh, you know, aspect of it, and um, that is happening mainly in the parallel market. Okay, today you find that the the margin or the premium between the official exchange rate and the parallel market rate is beginning to widen. And what is causing the, uh, the pressure in the parallel ma market can also be attributed to you know, speculative demand, a situation in which people are demanding dollars, not because they want to uh, use them for transactions, not genuine demand, but they're demanding dollars because they want to hoard them. They want to uh, you know, use them as a um, store of value. So, uh, or they want to even speculate. Speculate means you, you, you anticipate that the dollar will further rise so that if it rises, you now go and sell. So people uh, now are tre using dollar as a, uh, treating it as a commodity, okay, which ordinarily shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be the case in, in, our, in our economy. So I agree with him that there is the speculative aspect that's also uh, fueling this uh, crisis, this volatility, you know, um, that we're having. And why is there this, why, why is, what to what would we attribute, you know, to this? Okay, it is also partly because of the high inflation rate we have in, in Nigeria. Okay, because the higher the inflation rate, by the way, we expect that uh, before the end of the day, National Bureau of Statistics will release the inflation figure, you know, for the month of July. Okay, and the expectation is that inflation rates will further go up. So as people expect inflation rate to go up, because you know the effect of inflation is to reduce the value of your of the domestic currency. The purchasing power is weakened. So if the expectation is that inflation rate will go up, the naira I'm holding will lose value. What do I do? Okay. So you, some people, okay, would consider a natural, uh, a rational action to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, migrating in some other um, assets if you like, that um, are more stable in value. So you now find people now going to, uh, uh, you know, demand dollars. Uh, currency substitution, you know, becomes uh, uh, in vogue because of what? Because of rising, um, you know, inflation. So, yes, I agree. There is this speculative aspect. And that is why I also think, and I agree, even though he didn't mention it, but we know that what will eventually happen, I'm sure that, that was part of why he... I went to meet the president, um, you know, yesterday. Uh, part, what will eventually happen is that the central bank, you know, will have no choice but to intervene. Remember when the um, exchange rates were unified, the floating of the naira meant that the central bank will, uh, you know, substantially, you know, pull out and allow market forces to determine the exchange rate. But the but the way things are now, the central bank will have no choice but to intervene. Intervene means to bring out part of the dollars that it has, you know, to the official market so that there can be liquidity. Again, part of why people were also going to the parallel market was because of difficulty in assessing Forex from the official uh, window, the investors and exporters window. So when you have difficulty assessing, when you go to the bank and they tell you they don't have dollars, or even if they have, they can only give you $5 bills or $10 bills, okay? O all right. So what you, ha you may ha have no choice but to go to the parallel market. Again, the issue it was compounded by the evidence that some banks were even also encouraging that. Mm. Okay, now that was why you had him, you know, uh, saying that um, they were also going to monitor and show and deal with those banks that were, you know, engaged in illegal sell of, of forex. Okay, so the diversion of dollars from the official to the parallel market and then getting customers, their customers, to now go and patronize the foreign market, of course, is um, illegal, and that is what the central bank. Um, you know, should um, make sure okay. you know, that, that they deal with. So the issue of assets is important. And one way to solve these assets 
is for this um, is to also bring liquidity let the central bank inject more dollars in the market at least okay. in the meantime to stabilize it so we now have um, um, what is happening now in my view is more of a you know a quick fix a quick fix solution all, all right. right but I to think solve this problem fundamentally um, sustainably you need to go back to the you know the um, issues um, I was you know raising earlier the, the real factors that are causing this um, imbalance uh, and um, you know declining um, uh, value of the naira and uh, rising exchange rates. You know uh, that that's where I was going. That the CBN already announced that it would inject dollars into the market, but besides that, uh, many people feel they feel strongly that the announcement or in fact the decision to float the naira should have really been thought through well thought through better you know thought through before it was announced and implemented uh look at it where we are today it will seem as if to say some believe that when we had uh you know a market when we when we had uh, a very special market that the cbn dealt with where for instance those who have children abroad could apply with a form a to get monies across to their children and what who are studying abroad um it was a lot easier for them but now that window is shut it's not uh, just only shuts the one even in the black market is not totally open it's not you can't plan anything with that uh, so many people are questioning the monetary policy of the country and the advices of the president what are you seeing moving forward in fixed in this you think that uh, the policies, uh, let's say the actions that the CBN would, has decided to take in the last 24 hours, uh, just as you said, that you feel can help, would help indeed. Some people feel that uh, this administration is just uh, reacting to symptoms of issues, that there is deeper, there's something that needs to be done to fix this once and for all. Yeah, Shino, thank you so much. Well, let me start by saying that um, the twin reforms that um, um, the government um, uh, started, in my view, are justified. Whether you are talking about fuel subsidy removal or you are even talking about the issue at, at stake, which is um, unification of exchange rates, in my view, I think they are justified. You know, um, um, you know there are good grounds you know, to, um, you know, put them in place. Look at the, take the issue of um, unification, for example. Before now, we had, we had multiple windows, as you rightly pointed out. We had the secondary market intervention window that um, was actually used to uh, support, you know, fuel imports. We had the window for invisibles, uh, which, of course, uh, referred to uh, where people, uh, you know, going for medical tourism and education tourism, you know, could assess. We had the window... Uh, for SMEs, okay, and uh, then we also had the window for investors and exporters window. We had multiple windows, and these multiple windows were encouraging round tripping, were encouraging you know arbitrage, okay, um, such that you know at some point the gap between the parallel markets, okay, and the, this you know series of multiple windows became so wide that even the I and E window that was supposed to be an incentive for investors and incentive for exporters, you know, uh, wasn't working because of the, um, you know, the, 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 the wide parallel market premium, okay, what was obtainable in the parallel market. So it, 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 there was, as I said, a justification to close these windows. Um, I remember to the international partners to where Uh, we hope to get back to our Abuja studios to get uh, the good responses from Professor Waliki, who's really taking us on the journey that the monetary policy in the country seems to be taking us along with it, uh, so to speak, at this point in time. We'll be taking a look at how the uh, economy could be reflated, especially um, regulating it proper and when the impact of forex injection which the CBN has announced that it would do. Uh, we heard there was a circular in which there was some uh, pinpoint uh, direction that the CBN has embarked upon to ensure that it brings the economy back on track. As we speak, manufacturers, other business uh, 
uh, relations that people across the country and in fact with the international community uh, people are very unsure of what will happen tomorrow because of how uh, the economy seems to be floating on its own, not just the <laughs> Naira to dollar now, not even just the Naira, the economy itself, so I would say, it's floating as you don't know where it's going or where it's going to lead you if you want to invest your money into it. You also can share with us what your thoughts are, the things that you know that are not in the open, and if there's a way forward that you feel you can uh, contribute in moving our economy forward. All right, uh, let's take a very short break. We we'll reconnect with Abuja Studios. And okay, I think the guest is back as well as Andona. Andona, so uh, over to you now that you're back. All right, uh, so le let's see how that goes. We'll be back in just a moment to stay with us. On the issue that uh, the CBN had borrowed so much money, about $15 uh, billion dollars from uh, uh, gold in, Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. And that conversation that has been going on. Now, when we look at the possibility of the CBN um, injecting Forex into uh, the, the market, um, how sustainable is this going to be? Hey, ask a good question. I know how sustainable. You see, the sustainability will, of course, depend on the size of your reserves. Okay? And that's also, that also brings me back to the point I was making earlier. You don't unify suddenly without taking into cogn cognizance a whole number of factors. Mm. Okay? The only way a Naira float will work is if you are in a position to have um, to earn multiple streams of uh, Forex. Mm. Today, we are not earning multiple streams of Forex. Okay, and the only way you can also correct volatility in the forest market is when you have sufficient reserves, okay, for yeah. intervention once in a while, such that when it is going out of the band, assuming you're using a crawling peg, it's going out of the band, you can intervene to make sure that the exchange rate is within that, um, you know, that band, all right? So you can see what the sudden uh, unification, you know, uh, you know, had cost, and that's why I said. You know, it, it, it could have been um, a lot better handled. Mm. A lot of businesses reported uh, losses, you know, forex losses. I'm sure you read Nexel, Guinness, yeah. you know, and, and the likes. You know, a particular company has even uh, announced, it, you know, it's exiting Nigeria, GSK. Okay, so these are some of the fallouts of the sudden unification of um, exchange rates. Now, back to your question, is it sustainable? It is, you can only sustain your intervention. Okay, what gives you the power to intervene? It is your your reserves. Mm. All right. Today, if you check the CBN website, the liquid component of the reserve, liquid reserves, is put at around $33.2 billion. Mm. The gross is around 33.7. Okay. Of course, you have a part that is, is blocked. It is a liquid part that the central bank, you know, can use to intervene. So that also brings me to the point. In that CBN website, based on these financials, what is reported as liquid reserves is not the true picture of liquid reserves okay. because a, a part of it has been encumbered. Central bank can't use it because the central bank has um, you know, done securities lending, has uh, also done currency forwards, tying up, uh, you, know, you mentioned 15, I think 7.5 to exposure to uh, JP Morgan and uh, Goldman Sachs and the other one you know, by way of um, you know, uh, currency forwards. So let, let us say what, from what we hear, what we have there now is not 33, but maybe around $18 billion. Okay? $18 billion, given the volume of imports I just mentioned to you, yeah. is not enough to finance yeah. more than maybe four uh, months of um, um, imports. So where do we get these dollars from? Where do we get this money from? Yes, the, like the, the, said the foreign we reserves. Yeah. We have, if we, ha we have like $18 billion now, this in, in intervention will be done from the $18 billion. But is it sustainable? It also depends on how, uh, you know, um, fast that is, um, you know, filled, whatever we are removing, mm. okay? What's the level of accretion to reserves? If you are not earning enough Forex, you are simply drilling a hole. Before you know it, the uh, reserves will finish. But if I may, if I may quickly just ask, yeah. could it be as a result of the increase or the savings made from, um, you know, um, the removal of fuel subsidy removal, could that be one of the factors that may have given the government or could be giving the government this sort of confidence? Borrowing one million naira as we've you know, we done, if there was um, 
uh, subsidy. But this is a stock, the stock of dollar that Nigeria has accumulated over the, over the years, which we all thought was 33 billion, but now we have realized that part of it is already tight, and so it's about 18 billion. So the central bank governor, you know, what he's saying is that they have the intention of doing something. Doing something, in my view, means going to that uh, uh, box vote where they have the 18 billion, take some of it, and put out there in the forex market to boost supply. Mm. Okay, what well, sustainability means? The central bank should be in a position to always bring out. But you can always bring out if you <laughs> have. You, you have. Mm. And that's the point I'm making. Which is why I think, fortunately for us in Nigeria today, oil price is on the rise. Last time I checked, ninety dollars per barrel. Yeah. Okay. So oil price is rising. Our production, okay, um, you know it, it over t over the, the last couple of years been affected by crude oil theft. So if the government can deal with crude oil te theft and ramp up oil production, we we should be able to earn more dollars to now pump, you know. Okay, so even as we, we be to round up right now, I know we're going to be talking in several days, in days to come, we're going to be talking more about this. But then let's still go back to the issue of the sectors. Because I recall that when the acting CBN governor spoke, he, it, it seemed like he was putting out a warning to speculators. Yes. Now, what will this, in the short term, what will this happen? What will this, how will this impact the dollars as it stands right now? Thank you very much. In fact, what he did is the you know, uh, right thing, and I expect him from time to time to be issuing statements that will, you know, put confidence in the market, because what is causing specul spe speculative activity is, um, you know, loss of confidence, mm. okay, and the expectation, expectation that the uh, Naira will further, you know, de depreciate. So that statement, okay, that warning is a very good one. You will notice that in the days ahead, the parallel market rate is likely to come down, yeah. okay, why? Because those people now know that the central bank can actually, you know, um, you know, do something about the liquidity in the official market, which is what is driving people to the parliament. So if you are speculating, you're, you're holding dollar because you think it will, it will further rise. Mm. And, you, there is, and um, it's obvious, it's evident that in the next couple of days, the thing will fall. What yeah. will you do? You want to bring it out. True. People are holding yeah. dollars now with that statement, with what they plan to do, okay? A lot of people will now be forced to bring out that, that their dollars again in the parallel markets. Let me give you this question so that you can just add it and answer all along. One of the interventions that the CBN is deployed to check the issues around the forex at this point in time is to basically uh, place limits on the exchange rate for naira payout of diaspora remittances. Before now, the, the diaspora remittances has been a huge source of forex. Uh, uh, for us as a nation, uh, what impact do you think, the, think this would have on the entire process? Thank you so much. Um, I, I was saying that the, the central bank is um, much concerned about uh, rerouting, ensuring that diaspora remittances come through the former channels, you know, come through the banks. Because it's only when they come through the banks that the liquidity in the I and E window, you know, can improve. Uh, before now, uh, or even as we speak, much of it you know, um, usually goes um, uh, through informal channels. That was why the central bank introduced the Naira for dollar policy and some other policies that um, it has done in the past, including even uh, licensing many international money transfer operators. But un unfortunately, the Naira for dollar policy, um, you know, hasn't met, made any significant uh, impact, which is also uh, maybe partly why it's been suspended um, or, or right. dropped. All right. So, uh, well, unfortunately, this is where we have to go. Um, very little time, but then I hope that uh, subsequently you will make our time to come back on the show. Um, Dr. John, U no, okay. Uche, Uche Oelike, I beg yes, your pardon. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the program. And then I also must state this, that our guest is the Director, Institute of Capital Market Studies, National State University.